Hello to everyone guys, this is a new video, sorry if there wasn't an upload on Wednesday but uh, my monitor broke so uh, now I am uh, with an old monitor waiting for the new one and I'm uh, uh, recording this video. So uh, in this video we will uh, create the floating system for our uh, boat. Uh, so what we need is uh, the uh, player. Uh, that will have uh, the uh, mesh renderer and uh, filter for rendering the mesh, a box collider and a rigid body uh, with uh, a mass of about uh, 250 kilos because uh, this is the density that uh, we want. The box collider is uh, 111 uh, so that uh, this is the density. If you want, to, you can change the uh, dimension of the box collider if you want a more realistic look, but uh, it doesn't need, I don't need this kind of quality in my project so I will not change this but if you change this you need also to increase the mass accordingly uh, to fit the density. This is a density that I found pretty uh, good and correct for this kind of uh, object. So the uh, constraints is to freeze the rotation on the X and Z uh, direction, but uh, this is uh, more for the uh, the uh, thrust and the turning of our boat. So in the next episode, we can start by going in the water script. In the water script, we need to uh, uh, delete this uh, line. I already registered the episode. I'm registering so something can be a little bit off but uh, more or less is the same code uh, maybe with and square size uh, was the inverse uh, for example so we need to uh, delete the box collider and we need to create a new function right there uh, and this is a public function that will give us the level of the water so uh, we can call this water level uh, we need also an argument and a parameter, sorry, and this is a vector tree uh, called uh, position. In this uh, uh, function, we are going to declare a float called uh, y and to return this float, obviously. In the mid, in the center, we declare the float as zero. In the center, we are going to uh, put the calculation for the water level that we can find right there. So we just copy this. Uh, we change Y position in Y. And then we change the vertex. All, this, all of this with the position. So we can go with Ctrl F and uh, let's say change and then uh, uh, substitute. So we substitute four of these, that are the four in the formula. We have a correct formula uh, to, for the water level. Obviously, we need to say the return type of our function, sorry. Uh, now we can go in uh, the boat movement script. So we need the, to create the script. So go to create C sharp script. Uh, we go inside the uh, player and we drop the script right there. So we import the script. So we can create our script by uh, deleting uh, the two comments and transforming this into fixed update. Now we can uh, declare our variable. The variable we need are two. Uh, variable that we can change in the expector so we say serialize field and there are the float for the uh, volume and the constant float uh, for the uh, density of uh, the water so uh, p is the greek letter uh, that is the base for uh, the how it's called um, that is the base for density. So, ah, right. Uh, and obviously, we need the uh, 
we need to delete this. It's not serializable. It should be serializable. Okay. Uh, you need to apply the value as first because uh, the the this the constant variable can't be assigned in the script. We also need the other uh, three variable. This is private. One is the rigid body. One is the box collider. Uh, box collider. And we call it box. And the last is the water. And we call it obviously water. So we need to assign this variable. So rb will be equal to get component rigid body. A box will be the same thing, get component box collider. Box collider. And the water will be a game object dot find. We search for the water game object and we get the component uh, uh, water to get the water script. So that's perfect. Now in the fixed update, we need the uh, two uh, simple um, Bible calculation. The first is the volume calculation. This is just the multiplication between the size of the uh, box. That's it times uh, uh, all the size, so the x size, the z size, and the uh, y uh, image size. The size can be uh, get by uh, calculating the wave position. So we go water dot uh, uh, water level. So the, we get the water level at the position of our uh, game object minus uh, the uh, position in the obviously all in the uh, y direction then we can enter inside the if loop an if statement uh, and if the volume is more than zero then we can uh, add uh, a force to the rigid body add force why today i don't have the correct uh, suggestion by the ID. Uh, so at first, this force will be on the up uh, direction, so in the y direction, and will be uh, this times the uh, density of the water, uh, the dg, the gravity. So we can go physics dot gravity dot magnitude uh, times uh, uh, the volume that we have uh, calculated right now. So this is the complete script uh, for a simple floating. To have more complex floating, we should have a more uh, precise calculation of the volume underwater, but this is not the case for our game because the water level is pretty much always the same. So we can go uh, to assign nothing, really. There's nothing. In reality, the volume should neither be a serializable field. We don't need that. I, I remember wrong, wrongly. So we can go inside Unity and try the script to see if this works. So as you can see, the bot, the bot floats. We can see also that. Okay, it was. Uh, the right way, we can see that if we increase the amplitude, the boat starts floating in a wrong way because the volume is not calculated exactly and it doesn't respond correctly. Okay, I fixed the problem. The problem was just that the drag was uh, to zero in the rigid body. This should be to one so that the resistance effect is considered. So now it floats correctly in the water, as you can see. So we can uh, uh, see us in the next video. In the next video, we are going to see how this uh, boat uh, will move, uh, will turn and will accelerate. So we see the next time.